Hey guys, I'm doing some troubleshooting on this Grinnell 1191 to try to find out why it's so scratchy when I tune it and why the uh, reception seems to be a bit poor. I got some suggestions online. One is that the tuning capacitor plates might be shorting out. So I cleaned this out and then used a bright flashlight to shine in there and didn't see any obvious shorts. Uh, then I fired up my Hewlett Packard 410C on the most sensitive uh, 10 meg range and I've got one clip going to the chassis ground which is what one side of these tuning plates are and then I got another clip on uh, this section right now. I'll show you how sensitive this is if I just bridge the, the gap here with uh, my hand I can get the needle to deflect. So if there was a dead short, it would certainly show up. So as I rotate the, the tuning dial here, that needle never moves. And I found the same thing on the other two sections, so I don't think that's what the problem was. Another suggestion was that it could be bad mica caps uh, in the IF cans. Well, this doesn't actually have any fixed capacitors in the IF cans. Uh, what there are are two ceramic variable caps at the top uh, of each can. So two here, two here, two there. And I don't think those are bad. Uh, and if they are, well, it'll be tricky to replace. There's no values marked on those caps, um, physically on those caps themselves. And there's no value in here on the schematic. They just show up like that. <laughs> There are a few other fixed uh, mega capacitors underneath the uh, set though, and uh, I will check those um, eventually if I can't figure out the problem. Now, something else I found that will be very useful, I hope, is more service info. I found out that this radio is in Riders um, Volume 8. Actually, it's, it's marked right up here on the corner, but where I found this schematic online, they only had this one page and didn't have the other two. Well, I finally found the other two pages. So, one, I've got all the service info, uh, an alignment info, basic description, and some notes, and so on. Alignment procedure is actually pretty straightforward. So, once I get things working more or less, I will definitely go through and do it. Now, the most important thing I got is this, which is a diagram of where all the components are. Now, if you recall, there was one capacitor that I could not find in the schematic, so I just left it out of the set. Well, it does appear on this. It's this cap right here, which is a part number of, I think it says 28723. And there's another one down here that it's also 28723. Well, I've studied this schematic till my eyes were crossed, and there is only one capacitor, 2H723, which is this guy, and that's the one I replaced. There isn't another one on the schematic, but they show it on this diagram. So I am going to put that back in, or put a new capacitor in where I clipped the old one out, and uh, let's see what difference that might make. From there, um, if it still doesn't uh, solve the problem, I will start checking with voltages because those are indicated on the schematic. I think pretty much every two pin they show a voltage. So I'll start off with the power supply and work my way through the tubes. It was tough to get at, but I finally managed to get a new capacitor down in there. Then I went over and checked the last few original resistors that were still in the set. Uh, including this dog bone, which checked pretty close to being the correct value of 14K when I checked it initially. But now it's measuring about 24K. So perhaps while operating the set for a while, uh, it, it uh, really threw it off the tolerance. So definitely going to replace that. And that should have a pretty big impact because that's part of the main voltage divider chain coming off the, uh, the rectifier tube. It's the last one in the end here. 14k resistor going to ground. So having that be off so much would have affected the voltages at the various tap points through these other power resistors. I'll pop a new resistor in place of that one and I'll try firing this up again.
But I fired the radio back up and I seem to have better uh, reception now, pulling in a lot more stations, but I still have the horrible crackling as I tune around the dial. So what I want to do now is, uh, I think, check for some loose connections. There are some metal forks here that rub on that uh, inner part of the capacitor. I believe that's to keep the, the shaft grounded to the, uh, the body here. Maybe those are a bit corroded. I took some 320 grit sandpaper, folded it over, got it in between those contacts, went back and forth a few times then flushed it clean with some deoxid and that got rid of the crackling. Well, something else I noticed that's odd is that the antenna isn't doing anything. In fact, I don't even have an antenna hooked up right now. There's two terminals on the back, one marked antenna and one marked doublet. If I hook up a random length antenna to either input, it really doesn't do anything. I hear a crackle when I first connect it, but it's not improving the gain any, so I gotta take a look at that. Uh, perhaps the antenna coil's broken open or got some dirty contacts. I checked the antenna coil and associated circuitry and everything seems to be okay, no open coils. Uh, and I tried tweaking the trimmers associated with the antenna and put that way to make any difference. But clearly it's not getting the kind of gain it should be. Like if I touch these antenna inputs, it doesn't make any difference. However, if I touch the grid cap on this tube, the volume increases quite a bit. So I just keep checking. I think I found the problem. I'm measuring an open coil on this guy here, which is this coil. And I'm measuring it on uh, what would be the secondary side, the one that feeds right into the RF amp tube. So antenna input goes through a uh, bunch of switches for the different bands and so on, but eventually it, uh, it goes through over to this coil and it appears to be open so I'm gonna have to try to extricate it and take a closer look here's the coil and indeed the smaller winding is measuring open so I'm gonna poke around and if I'm lucky the break is near one of the actual lugs Otherwise, uh, I would have to very carefully unwind it and count the number of turns and the directions of the windings and uh, rewind it. I carefully unwound that bad coil and made this diagram to aid me in rewinding it. It turned out to be 12 turns and it was going in this direction counterclockwise as you look at the bottom of the coil and uh, there we go I wound it back on I mount it back on the radio and hopefully this will solve my antenna problem YouTuber battery maker suggested that I check the resistor inside the iTube socket and he was right it was measuring about 50 percent high so I got a new one in there it took me a little while to figure out how to get this thing open there's a little metal tab I had to bend over and then rotate this thing about a quarter turn. Rotate the socket while holding the metal. Uh, and uh, when it popped out, and I'll have to do the inverse to get it back together. I reinstalled that coil and I just powered the radio back up. So let's see what kind of difference it makes. Wave bound, they count one and one. When he's on, 
I'm on the AM broadcast band. Soon as station. Well, hopefully, these will do something. Without getting too much with them, because we want him to be pitching instinctively. It's more like it. Let's see if I attach an actual antenna lead. Alright, much better. And I also put a new resistor in that eye tube. So let's see if it's doing any more. Hmm. It deflects a bit when I tune into a station, but not as much as I would expect. Four three Royals in the fourth. Wells to Getz, there's a strike. He was for a base hit or, or maybe with an antenna attached, it'll deflect even more, so I'll get this rigged up. I've got the radio set right side up, hooked up an antenna, got the speaker facing forward. And I also put in a, a different eye tube. Um, I was wrong, the one that actually came with this wasn't really all that bright. So this is the one I actually salvaged out of that TV and radio lab. It's kind of bent. <laughs> they mounted in the socket very well and it says web core on it. Um, no no actual tube model number, but hey, it seems to be working pretty, pretty well here. So it's a little demonstration. So, here's when I'm tuned off of a station, and when I get in close. So when the eye is at its narrowest and brightest, when you get that fine wedge, that's when you're right on the station, so right there. Okay, sounds pretty good. Picking in a heck of a lot more stations now that I actually have a, a the uh, I fixed that open uh, antenna coupling coil. I was just fooling around on the Sherway band a little more and dead on at 2500 I picked up one of those time uh, reference stations. And this is the one from the US, not Canada, uh, like I was trying to find on my uh, FOCA 60 radio, but I could only find the Canadian one, not the American one. I wonder if this is one of those number stations I've heard about that supposedly is part of the spy network. It's 
just somebody reading off uh, numbers in Spanish. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, try googling for uh, number stations, I think they call them, and you'll find lots of info out. Oh, by the way, it is at night now, so it's a good time to listen to shortwave. It's weird, I hit a lot of carriers. You can see the blips on the eye tube. But they might uh, be using a type of modulation that I just can't pick up. Like single sideband or something like that. Well, I guess that's about that. But certainly the radio is working much, much better now. I'll just switch back to the broadcast. Bay. So basically, all that's left is to uh, get that belt uh, taken care of. And. Uh, and it's onto the cabinet. In fact, it's stated in Hebrews chapter 11. 